Good day, friend of God. Welcome to prayer on Thursday, the 2nd of May. Let's begin with a deep breath and an open heart. Lord, open our lips together and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me, turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Let us pray. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We jump to Leviticus chapter 19 today. In chapter 17, we missed rules about the slaughter of animals and the care of blood. In chapter 18, the abominations of the Canaanites, and picking up in chapter 19. This concerns the holiness of individuals. We will just be reading verses 26 to 37. You shall not eat anything with its blood. You shall not practice divination or soothsaying. You shall not round off the side growth on your head or destroy the side growth of your beard. You shall not make gashes in your flesh for the dead or incise any marks on yourself. I am the Lord. Do not degrade your daughter and make her a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry and the land be filled with depravity. You shall keep my Sabbaths and venerate my sanctuary, for I am the Lord. Do not turn to ghosts and do not inquire of familiar spirits to be defiled by them, I, the Lord, am your God. You shall rise before the aged and show deference to the old. You shall fear your God. I am the Lord. When a stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not wrong him. The stranger who resides with you shall be to you as one of your citizens. You shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall not falsify measures of length, weight, or capacity. You shall have an honest balance, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hin. I, the Lord, am your God, who freed you from the land of Egypt. 
You shall faithfully observe all my laws and all my rules. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think we can summarize the section by saying, be holy in your practices of grief, no radical haircuts, tattooing, or gashing of your own flesh for the dead. Be holy in inter-family relationships. Be holy by seeking the Lord and not familiar spirits. Be holy by honoring the aged. Be holy by treating the stranger, that is the non-resident alien, a foreigner. Be holy by treating each foreigner as one of your servants, loving him as yourself. Be holy by running a true business. Serving God has all kinds of implications for all of life, really. May the Lord help us to be set apart for service of God and the common good. It is our joy and our delight and truly our deepest happiness. Now we turn to Paul's second letter to the church at Thessalonica. The purpose of the letter is to clear up confusion about the coming of Christ. I don't think it had that effect. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love of every one of you has for each other is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony to you. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may count you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may fulfill every good purpose of yours and every act prompted by your faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I always find it difficult when you read the judgment of God upon non-believers and those who do not know God. Our opening verses are pretty harsh. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power. Verses 8 and 9. What the rub is for me is that Jesus clearly tells us to love our enemies, to go the extra mile, to bless those who spitefully use us. But here the enemies of God are just destroyed, according to the author of Thessalonians. It seems more vindictive than good theology. But as I consider this, maybe God's punishment of the ungodly is actually their redemption those who love darkness would find the light of God's presence unbearable, painful, tortuous. So maybe what they experience as the punishment of God is actually the severe mercy of God, which transforms them into creatures they would have hated before, creatures of righteousness. I do not know for sure. I speculate. But I do not believe that an ancient reigning monarch from the Middle East of 2,000 years ago and their vindictive nature and their iron rule is an appropriate model for the king of glory. Who did what? Who gave his only son 
for the rebels that they might have life. Thanks be to God for God's incredible mercy. Now in peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high, for peace in Gaza, Israel, Syria, Sudan, Ukraine, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, for our salvation, for the salvation of all people, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. For the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all, for our bishops, for all clergy and lay people laboring together in the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. For Charles the King, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, for the city of Markham, for the cities of all of our listeners, for every city and community, and for those who live in them by faith, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. For good weather and abundant harvest for all to share, for those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, especially praying this day for Wendy, Keith, Joe, Gabe, Maggie, Brad, Karen, Anthony, Igor and Donna, Shirley and Barry. For all prisoners and captives, especially the captives held in Gaza, for their safety, health and salvation of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, pandemic, environmental disaster and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now, friends, the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifying Spirit enfold you and all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Thursday.